How do you like eggs in the morning? I like mine with a snog. French or peck or on the neck as long as I get my snog. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everybody, nice to see you all. Welcome to my blog. Now today I've got quite a bit of um, information for you. I'm going to do a moon and stars meditation. I'm going to pick out a couple of cards like I usually do. And uh, we've got a bit of a guest today. Um, whether she'll show her face on, on camera, I don't know. But it's my one of my oldest friends in the world, um, Floss. And she is going to be Stephen Spielberg today. Oh, she's going to, she's going to show her face. Hi. This is my... This is my friend Floss, who was going to be um, who was going to be working the camera today. Yeah. And um, so she she's as daft as a brush, so she'll probably laugh all the way through. Um, so you know, just you know, all my friends are daft, really, but um, she's wonderful. I've known her since I was fourteen. <clears throat> right. Okay. Let's start with a bit of a uh, bit of a joke. This fella goes into a bookshop, and he says um, to the assistant, um, "Have you got that book?" Um, for men with really, really small willies. She says, it isn't in yet. He says, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> Start with a bit of filth. Always does the work. Right. So let's get on with the um, class, with, with, with the class, with the um, blog today. What I'd like to talk about today, I think I've spoke about it before, is about raising your vibration. Now, when you raise your frequency and you raise your vibration, you attract more positivity into your life, you feel better, it's, it's a very cleansing experience, it's lovely. So the meditation I'm going to be doing is called Moon and Stars Meditation. And what that will do, it will raise your, medita uh, raise your frequency right up there. You'll feel better, you'll feel more positive, you might attract um, spirit messages as well. Um, you also might um, attract your spirit guide. I think I talked about spirit guides a few weeks ago. So what we're going to do is the Moon and Stars Meditation. So before a meditation, I always say, um, take three deep breaths, one through your nose and out through your mouth. Always take three deep breaths, one for your body, one for your heart, one for your soul. So you start off with the deep breaths. And now it's up to you. You can close your eyes or you can look at me when you're doing the meditation. It's entirely up to you. So what I want you to imagine, after you've taken your deep breaths, I want you to imagine that you are on a beach. And the beach is at midnight, so it's pitch black on this beach, but you can hear the waves slightly, you know, to and and fro, and the, the sky is full of stars. Imagine you're on a beach at midnight. There's a full moon there. It's a warm summer's night, so it's maybe about end of July. So you're on the beach. Now, always... When you start a meditation, always imagine that there's a white light of protection around you, around your whole body. Try and be calm, try and keep breathing. Now, what I'd like you to imagine is two hands in front of you. Now, you can't really see who this person is. All you can see is like a white mist and these two wonderful hands and they're in front. And I want you to take those hands now, this is your spirit guide. Take those hands. Always remember you're safe in this exercise, in this meditation. Always remember that you're very safe. So what I want you to imagine is you're floating in the air. About 20 feet in the air. You've still got the hands of your spirit guide. They're taking you up into the air. Now, what I'd like you to imagine now, that you're floating another 20 feet. You're floating, you're floating, you're floating, you're floating. You're amongst the clouds. You're just floating higher and higher and higher. You're, and you feel completely safe. You don't feel frightened in this meditation. You feel wonderful, you feel calm, you feel uplifted. You're starting to feel uplifted. You've got your spirit guide's hands there. <clears throat> higher, 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 till you are amongst the stars. See the stars everywhere, see the moon. You're in the galaxy. Now, what I'd like you to imagine now is your third eye chakra, which I talked about before. This is your third eye chakra. It's placed right in the middle of your forehead. And this is the chakra that, um, that opens your psychic ability. Psychic abilities, it makes you more perceptive. So what I want you to imagine 
is your third eye chakra opening right now. Now this is like an indigo colour. So imagine a wonderful indigo light just beaming in your forehead. Now what I'd like to imagine now, imagine the moon in front of you. Imagine the bright light of the moon. Imagine this indigo light beaming out of the top of your forehead and wrapping around the moon. Just imagine this indigo light wrapping around the moon. Just imagine it. This beautiful indigo light wrapping around the moon. Now, your vibration at the moment will be really high. <coughs> Excuse me. Now you can put music onto this. As long as that's the gist of, you know, the meditation, that is very, very good for raising your vibration and raising your frequency. So that's a great moon and stars meditation obviously when you do it on your you know when you do it yourself and you and you know you put a few candles on and you're alone and you know you've turned your phone off you can kind of you know you can make it a bit longer but that's the that's the top and bottom of the moon and stars meditation but always imagine that you always remember that your spirit guides got hold of you so you never you know you're never frightened you never feel um you know frightened or anything you feel safe okay so that's the moon and stars meditation which will lift your vibration okay i think we're going to have two cards of the week now so let's have a card let's oh you can't always have good ones right this is the tower now to be honest, most tarot readers fear this card coming up in somebody's reading because it's not a brilliant card. The Tower is a major arcana card and it's all about, you can imagine your life, you're just plodding along in your life and all of a sudden something comes along to absolutely destroy your perfect picture of happiness and stability. This is a shock. This is a bolt out the blue. Now, depending on where this is in your reading, so if this is if if you're talking about your relationship and this comes out within your relationship, this will make a, mean a breakdown of your relationship because it's like the tower isn't isn't stable. You know, it's crumbling down the tower. It's it's catastrophe. It's destruction. It's the tower of destruction. So if this is talking about your relationship, it will definitely mean the end of a relationship. But the you know the relationship is crumbling anyway. <clears throat> if this comes up in your career, it could mean bankruptcy, it can mean you lose your job. I have also seen this card be very literal. I once read for this, um, for a lady, and a tree fell on a house after she'd got this, so it can mean structural destruction, it can mean actual, you know, your house falling down or your roof caving in, it can, you know, sometimes the cards can be very literal, you know, this always reminds me of the Twin Towers, it's 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 not a good card, It's um, and it's usually a bolt out of the blue, it's something that's not expected, it's a shock, it's, it's, you know, catastrophe. Um, I can't really think of a song. The only song I can think of, but I can't remember how it goes, is A State of Shock by Michael Jackson. Um, disaster. I'm trying to think of a disaster song. Uh, the only disaster song I know is... Um... <laughs> Have you seen my wife, Mr Jones? Do you know what it's like on the outside? Remember that song? That was the Bee Gees. New York. Man in Disaster, but that doesn't really have anything to do with the tower. But that was the only song I could think of with Disaster in the title. But um, yeah, State of Shock. So it's not really a good card. But as I'm such a positive person, as you know, I suppose the tower could mean, well, you know, the bottom has been reached. Phoenix rising up from the ashes. Maybe this tower had to fall for you to have a new kind of life and, and you know, to move on. So there you go. There's the tower. Right. Let's have a good one. Let's have a good cry. Ah, this is a good one. Right. The Six of Wands. This is a really lovely card. In fact, this is one of my favourite cards. This means victory. It means success. It means public acclaim. It means, oh, glory. It's a wonderful card. So if this would come up, usually ones are to do with your job, your persona. They're not usually to do with your love life, but this would definitely be a yes card. So if you're asking about your love life and you pick one card out and you get that, I would say it's a yes. It's a very positive card. But it usually means that, can you see, I always say this is the Rocky card because that reminds me of um, Rocky Balboa when he's, he's had the fight with, um, oh, what's his name? 
um, Apollo Creed and nobody thinks he's going to win and it's, he's kind of holding the cup above his head can you see how he's holding the golden fleece in this case this is this is Jason um, in the Argonaut and he's found the golden fleece if anybody knows anything about mythical logical mythological mythological situations um, <coughs> and Greek gods this is Jason <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a little bit of a clack in my throat. Um, I nearly had a chocolate before I come out, but I, I said, no, that'll give me a, a clack, but I've got it anyway, so I could have had that arrow. Anyway, um, so I do go on, don't I? So, um, <laughs> so Jason and the Argonauts finding the golden fleece above his head, victory, success. Um, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, Rocky theme, brilliant. He's just won the fight with, with uh, Apollo Creed. Wonderful card, six of ones. Right, there you go. So we've got a, a bit of a dodgy card and a, and a wonderful card today. So there's your cards for the week. I hope you get the six of ones. No, I haven't finished yet. Don't be turning it off. <laughs> Have you turned it off? Oh, OK. I thought you were going to turn it off there. Do you know, she's such an amateur. You can't get the staff. <laughs> right, joke for you. Fella gets a chimp, buys a chimp for his wife, and his wife can't stand it. So she says, get rid of that chimp now. So he goes down the pub, and he sees Paddy, and he says to Paddy, the Irish man, <clears throat> just in case any Americans are watching, Paddy's, you know, the Irish guy. Um, and um, he says, Paddy, he's 20 quid, he said, the wife can't stand <coughs> this chimp. He said, can you take it to the zoo? Yeah, okay, mate. Can't do an Irish accent. So... Anyway, a couple of hours pass and uh, the guys come out the pub and everything and he sees Paddy and the chimp skipping hand in hand. And he goes over and he says, hey, I thought I'd give you 20 quid to take that blooming thing to the zoo. He said, well, he said, you did. He said, but we had some money left. He said, so we've got the pictures and he said, we've just had some chips. <laughs> joke you know i'm running out of clean jokes folks i keep saying to you please send me some clean jokes because i am running out i mean that was fairly clean oh well that was very clean actually so i hope you have a wonderful week i hope you've enjoyed my jokes and i will see you um soon have kisses and laughter and love and everything wonderful and snogs and i shall see you soon bye